Hello, my name is Dr. Kevin Kirby. And I'd like to introduce you to a foot model that I constructed out of wood for a seminar I lectured out a number of years ago. This foot model is represented by a rear foot and also a forefoot. And we can see on the forefoot section that we have a first metatarsal, second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal. Also, holding the metatarsals and the rear foot together are a number of cords. We have a set of blue cords that represent the plantar fascia. Here's the plantar fascia on the blue cords going from the medial calcaneal tubercle to the plantar metatarsal head area. Actually, the real foot goes to the base of the digits. And also, we have these pink cords, which represent the plantar ligaments. Here we have the plantar ligaments, the plantar fascia. Now these are all set up so that each individual cord goes into a cleat, and I can vary the tension in the cords and the length of the cords by changing the, where the cord attaches on the cleat. So, in the first demonstration of how the plantar fascia and plantar ligaments maintain arch stability, let's go ahead and load up the foot. I'm going to be pressing down on the foot with about 40 pounds of force. Here we go. You can see that there's some flexing of the arch or flattening of the arch under 40 pounds of load, but it doesn't collapse. Let's look at it from the rear. So when I add in that 40 pounds of force straight down, it doesn't it tends to be stable. Turn it around. Do that again. Pushing down again with 40 pounds of force it is fairly stable. What happens now, though, when I take the first metatarsal plantar fascia? and the second metatarsal plantar fascia and loosen that up just as I would if I had done let's say a plantar fasciotomy in the medial half of the plantar fascia or a plantar fascial tear. What happens now is that the foot tends to want to pronate. I'll show you that again. load that up again instead of wanting to be stable it tends to want to evert the calcaneus because no longer is the plantar fascia tight on the medial aspect which creates that medial column stability that we need in order to prevent the foot from over pronating. So let's reattach plantar fascia to the first and second metatarsals in the same fashion. Here we are again loading it up. Very stable. And the stability is interesting in this regard because in the human foot and this foot model I have a load sharing system. I have the plantar fascia. All these strands going from the rear foot to the forefoot are part of the, the blue cords or plantar fascia which are helping to load share with the plantar ligaments which are the pink cords. So if the plantar fascia is cut, the plantar ligaments still can act to resist deformation of the longitudinal arch under load. And if something happens to the plantar ligaments, the plantar fascia is going to come under greater load in order to maintain the arch. So as these two systems in combination with the plantar intrinsics the deep flexures and the perineus longus which help provide arch stability for the human foot in each step.